steady now. Steady. Howdy, partners. See, what I just did there was land a perfect lasso. You are now tied up and incapable of escaping, which means that my average view duration will be at an all-time high of 100%, allowing the YouTube algorithm to push out my video to every person on the planet, which means that I, shoot tootin' cowboy Saji, will be the most number one subscribed YouTuber on the platform. I, I, I really sure do hope this works because I, sp I spent my entire life savings on it. It... It being this invisible lasso. What's up? Hope everyone's doing well. So sorry about the other guy. Shooting Tootin' Cowboy Saji tends to be just a little bit on the aggressive side. Today we're going to be talking about Gina Carano. Or as I like to call her, Pee Pee Poo Poo. You know, because she stinks. God, that was fucking terrible. Anyway, she recently teamed up with Ben Shapiro and The Daily Wire uh, when Disney decided to cancel her for speaking her mind. That's that's a direct quote. I didn't make that up. Now, before we get into the film review, uh, I just want to give a little bit of background as to who Gina Carano is and what she specifically said when speaking her mind. Pee pee poo poo. Oh, sorry. Um, such a silly mistake. W won't happen again. Gina is an actress and former mixed martial artist. Um, she's most known for her roles in Deadpool and The Mandalorian. Did you guys know that while she was doing MMA, she had a nickname? And her nickname was Conviction? That's fucking perfect because her conviction is pretty much the reason she was fired from Disney in the first place. She ended up posting several distasteful things on her social media, uh, such as anti-mask rhetoric, voter fraud rhetoric, a post that compared Republicans to Jewish people during the Holocaust. Just a little bit tone deaf, Gina. Just a little bit. And last but not least, mocking trans people by putting boop bop beep in her Twitter bio. And because she's so full of conviction, she stood her ground and said, Beep bop boop has zero to do with mocking trans people and everything to do with exposing the bullying mentality of the mob that has taken over the voices of many genuine causes. I want people to know you can take hate with a smile. So boop you for misunderstanding. Hashtag all love no hate. Wow, that was the most passive aggressive thing I've uh, ever read. Also, kudos to you uh, for exposing the bullying mentality and airing the voices of many genuine causes by putting boop bop beep in your bio. You really got him, Gina. Hashtag all love no hate my fucking ass. Anyway, um, obviously her agency dropped her and she was fired from Disney Plus, but don't get it twisted. Disney Plus only did this because it was gonna affect their ratings. Either way, corporations only care about issues. Uh, if, if it affects their business, we shouldn't be giving them praise for doing anything like this. This is quite literally the bare minimum. So now we're brought to the present day. Gina Carano was picked up by the Daily Wire and ravagingly handsome host, Ben Shapiro. You lift that wood, Ben. When I was thought to be lost for Gina, the Daily Wire was there to put her back on her feet, uncancel her, if you will. And her new film was born on June 14th, 2022. Terrible on the prairie. Now, I've already watched the movie with my pals and I can tell you right away, it was not good. In fact, uh, it was so bad that it actually stressed me out. But thankfully, Vance Global, the sponsor of today's video, was able to save the day uh, with their brand new CBD gummies. Fuck, hold on one second. These are the CBD gummies in this little packaging. Uh, when they when they did come to my door, they were in a very discreet box, so nobody knew that I was taking CBD gummies. Now, uh, Vance Global reached out to me to genuinely promote these gummies. They didn't write me a script or anything, so I'm just gonna give you my thoughts on the product. If you're looking for ways to get rid of stress, uh, but you don't wanna actually get high, these are like perfect for that. I took one while writing the script for this video actually and uh, had to stop typing because no words were coming into my brain. Again, I wasn't stoned. I was like dazed and perfectly relaxed. Although I, I definitely don't recommend uh, trying to write a script while you take one. You're not, you're not gonna make any progress. Not only that, but these gummies actually genuinely taste good. Now for reference, I hate anything grape flavored. Don't get me wrong, I, I love grapes, like the fruit. I just hate anything flavored grape. So, so obviously the first one I tried was the grape flavored one. 
but it it didn't disappoint it actually tasted really good like i was very very surprised so if the cbd gummies interest you uh, or if you have dreams of becoming a wannabe stoner, visit www.advanced-global.com and use code SAJI for 20% off your order or use code SAJI30 for 30% off subscriptions for both initial and renewal orders. And thank you again, Vance Global, for sponsoring this video. Cool transition! Cool transition! Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh, ah, ooh. Ah, okay, back to the movie review. Oh, and also, just to preface before we begin, I definitely subscribed to The Daily Wire to watch Terror on the Prairie and did not watch it illegally. I did not, I did not go to 123 Movies and watch Terror on the Prairie because I am not a bad person. I would never pirate a movie because that's illegal. I subscribed to The Daily Wire and watched it. I paid my dues because I'm a law-abiding citizen. Okay, let's continue with the video. If I could describe Terror on the Prairie using a few words, it would be boring apologist propaganda western. It's expected that something backed by the Daily Wire, um, a right-wing media outlet, would spew propaganda. But they could have at least made it entertaining propaganda. I don't know how they managed to make a cowboy western boring. Even people that are subscribed to the Daily Wire had the same thoughts. <clears throat> they said, Let me just say, I love that Daily Wire is getting into entertainment. I've been a subscriber for over a year, and I'm not leaving anytime soon. However, this movie is not good. The acting is competent, but fails to sell me on anything deeper than surface level emotions, like fear or anger. The plot drags on for way too long, considering the fact that nothing really happens. On top of this, spoiler alert, though not really, we are treated to another feel-good ending, where everything turns out perfectly for the characters without having to sacrifice anything which is so frustrating. Watching this movie made me realize the pattern that is forming with Daily Wire movies. They all follow strong, independent female characters who have to rescue men who are incompetent or defeat the men who are evil. If I want the feminist messaging, I can go to Hollywood. They have plenty of that. This is, this is supposed to be Daily Wire, a company that stands for traditional values and against the wokeness of Hollywood. If, if, if it were one or two movies from then, I wouldn't have a problem. Hell, movies like Alien that follow strong female protagonists are some of my favorite movies of all time. How are you going to pull the I have a black friend card? Jesus. I just want some variety from Daily Wire, especially in an era where masculine men are increasingly rarer and under attack. Uh, I'm surprised that an average Daily Wire enthusiast uh, would give a movie valid critiques, and then of all things, critique it because the lead is female, and complain that masculine men are victims because their masculinity is under attack. Holy shit. What a world we live in. I do unfortunately have to agree with the misogynist about what he said about the plot dragging on. That's it, that's all That's all I agree with him on. This movie is two hours long and could have easily been an hour and a half. Uh, the shots are just so fucking unnecessarily long. These wide angle shots of people walking where they just walk and don't say anything and there's no music. It's just please. Cut the shot. I was actually taking notes while watching the movie, and the first thing I wrote was, beginning is slow as fuck, holy shit, I'm losing my mind. The plot um, of this film is as basic as it gets. Family in house, husband leaves, cowboys come to house, Gina's fucking stupid and holds them at gunpoint, cowboy's angry, cowboys wanna kill Gina, Gina's still stupid, husband comes back, saves the day, and they live happily ever after. Super straightforward and super convenient. Gina's character... <laughs> I, I don't even remember her name. That's how little of an impact this film had on me. She plays this apprehensive and scared mother uh, that also worries for her family and will face anything head-on just to take care of them. But, just like real life, she makes terrible decisions that ends up putting her family in jeopardy. There's a scene where a snake is in their house and it's close to her baby. Uh, so Gina does what anyone uh, in her spot would do, and she aims a fucking shotgun at it. 
two feet away from her child. This is only the start of terrible decisions Gina makes in this film. Thankfully, uh, her husband swoops in and saves the day. Also, the actor's name that plays the husband is Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Talk about manifesting. I should just change my name to Saji YouTube Sharma, and then I'll be the biggest YouTuber on the platform. Me and my invisible lasso. <laughs> also, this dude's acting just sucks, and we'll get more into the acting later. It just makes me think that the only reason the casting directors casted him in the first place is because of his nickname. Uh, okay, now all we need is an actor for Jeb. Okay, gotcha. Uh, you know, someone that can be hard-headed and have that rugged, clean cowboy look while also, while also being trustworthy and caring. Maybe someone with kind eyes. You know, at first you're scared of them, but... Uh, you start to trust them the more you get to know them. Okay, okay, uh, what about, uh, Jensen Ackles? He did a great job as Soldier Boy in The Boys, and he's very popular right now. Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, The Boys has a lot of communist propaganda. For all we know, Jensen's probably a Marxist. Okay, fair, fair. Uh, what about, oh, Donald Cowboy Sharon? His most recent film was Cop Shop, and he was just a- Wait, did you say Cowboy? Uh, yeah. Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Cast him. Oh, okay, uh, yeah, great. His nickname has to be Cowboy for a reason. Otherwise, we're just idiots that shouldn't have this job. And that just can't be true. Yeah, definitely. We're definitely really good at our jobs. Anyway, the overall acting of this movie is just very bland. Cowboy's accent is just so forced and hard to understand. It makes me feel like he might not be a real cowboy. Like, he, he might be lying to us. And he, 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 he wouldn't do that. He, he wouldn't lie to us, right? Yep, yep, yep. You go hunt down that damn coyote. We're gonna see more of our chickens. Eddie McAllister. Fury! <laughs> Gina just doesn't put any effort in, which is weird because this movie was made for her. Her role as a strong female lead uh, that fights for her family and beliefs and doesn't back down um, is just a very clear reflection of herself and her conviction in real life. This film is supposed to portray Gina's life and everything that happened to her through the lens of a Wild West story, and it's just so blatant. There's this one scene that's so out of the blue and doesn't fit the plot or story at all. Gina's at home uh, with her and her baby when a group of Native Americans stumble by. One of them is injured uh, and Gina helps. That's it. That's the whole scene. It's mentioned one more time when Mr. Cowboy and Little Cowboy come home. I'm sorry. They must have wandered off the reservation looking for something. Got no scrap. But other than that, no one brings it up again. It makes me it makes me speculate uh, that this scene's entire purpose was to make Gina look better. Oh look, Gina's helping people of color. She can't be racist or a white supremacist. It's impossible now. The main antagonists um, of the film are these cowboys that are seeking revenge on Gina's husband. They show up to her house one day asking for water when the husband is not home. Gina gives them water as well as offers them um, a full meal right after she just complained that she was running out of food. We live in a shack, Jed. We've got old tools, worn out livestock, and can only feed our children with food borrowed off store credit. I'd be happy to cook you men some breakfast before you go. There you go, jeopardizing your family again. Anyway, Gina goes outside and sees that these men are scalpers. Therefore, have killed people? I don't know. She then goes back inside and holds the six of them at gunpoint for... Get this. Being killers. I don't feed killers in my house. Okay, this decision right here is the reason that there's a main conflict in the film at all. First of all, uh, you're holding them at fucking gunpoint. How are you mad at them? For being killers, you're about to be a killer yourself. And second, there's one of you and six of them. How do you think you're gonna win this in your tiny, tiny head? You just saw that they're scalpers, so there probably isn't a line that they won't cross. Also, why are you mad at them for being killers? This is the Wild West. Everyone is a fucking killer. That's why it's called the Wild West. It's literally normalized to kill people. That's what makes it wild. Not only that, but you're jeopardizing your two children even more uh, by aggressing fucking scalpers. I honestly think it's kind of funny um, how this movie tried to make Gina's character a strong lead, uh, full of conviction, but she just ends up making stupid decisions that lead to her downfall. Pretty accurate to me. 
they hit the nail right on the head. And I kid you not, the rest of the movie, uh, it's just a battle between Gina and her son versus the four grown men. Can you guess who comes out on top? Rhymes with Gina! Anyway, the main antagonists of the movie are these ex-confederate cowboys that want to kill Gina's husband, which is why they go to the family's house in the first place. Now, you might be thinking, uh, wow, the Daily Wire, whose audience is majority Republican and therefore majority confederate apologists, made the bad guy in their movie an ex-confederate. That's very progressive of them, because usually... They don't, they don't mind Confederates. I'm gonna stop you right there. It turns out that Mr. Cowboy here is actually an ex-Confederate. The only difference is he changed sides uh, towards the end of the war. Let her go, Miller. It's Captain Miller to you. I'd appreciate it if you'd remember that. So there we have it. We have found the hidden agenda in a Republican Cowboy movie starring Angel Dust from Deadpool. Not all Confederates bad, some Confederates good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Now, uh, the portion of their audience that was still debating on whether they should hang that Confederate flag in their closet now has an excuse to do so. Ah, uh, I can already see it now. Did it cut? Dude, that flag is extremely offensive. You, you can't have that up. Excuse me? I can hang whatever flag I want to. And besides, this flag represents my history and my ancestors. Uh, yeah, your your ancestors weren't good people if they were a part of the Confederacy. They were literally fighting for the right to own slaves. <coughs> yes, some Confederates were bad and not good, but some Confederates were good and changed sides to the Union, making them good people. Where the f where the fuck did you get that information from? The Daily Wire? What? <laughs> what, the, what? What are you What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. What you, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that was that's crazy. <laughs> I come up with my own opinions. Thank you very much. I'm just gonna keep the toothpick in my mouth because it just feels it just feels right. There is another scene that I want to talk about uh, that surprise rubs me the wrong way. Cowboy is away from home while his family is about to die and is walking out of a bar uh, when this woman walks up to him and starts harassing him, trying to force herself on him sexually, even after he uh, tells her that he as a wife. He then pushes her on the ground and walks away. Now before I talk about this, I want to preface by saying that in no way, uh, shape or form am I discrediting any trauma men have gone through dealing with sexual harassment, especially since it's often a disregarded and overlooked topic. However, while The Daily Wire could be completely selfless with the inclusion of this scene, it, it feels a little bit backhanded to me. The Daily Wire is a very masculine, dominated media outlet that often does not put the concerns of women at its forefront. Things like uh, anti-abortion and fucking anti-feminist pieces are examples of this. So it feels spot on to me that they include a scene with a man being harassed, almost like they're saying, women throw themselves onto men all the time. Men getting harassed like this is a common occurrence and this never happens to women because they are the problem. Again, this is pretty big speculation on my part, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But the intention of this scene uh, just feels like it was made to make men look better and women look worse. And there we go. That is my review for Terror on the Prairie. The ending is pretty predictable. Um, except for this scene, where Cowboy attempts to take out one of the bad guys by fucking Batman dive bombing. And obviously, it doesn't work because he's not fucking Batman. Anyway, that about does it. Um, this movie was just a terrible attempt at trying to paint Gina Carano in a good light, and it didn't work because it just made Gina Carano look like a terrible mother that makes stupid decisions. And sometimes helps Native Americans. Woo! Not racist! And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of all the Confederate apologist propaganda. How about... They were all not good. Anyway, that's gonna wrap things up. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Check out my Patreon, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, and I will see you guys next time, where I legally change my name to Saji YouTube Sharma, making me the biggest YouTuber and rightful owner of YouTube itself. Move over, Google. There ain't no room in the town for the two. There ain't room enough in this town for the. There ain't two. There ain't. Fuck, what is it? Move aside, Google. This this town ain't big enough for the two. Okay, that was it. Let me let me try one more time. Move over, Google. This town ain't big enough for the two of us. That was supposed. To, it was supposed to be flawless like that, but it, it kind of fucked it up. Whatever. Fucking let me end the video. God damn it. Patreon shout out time. Shout out to all my tier two patrons, including Savannah Cordova, Brownie Fan Club. Man, I want some brownies right now. Uh, Samira Truesdale, Ketamine. <laughs> this is so funny. <laughs> Thank you, uh, tier two patrons. 
your donation means the world. And uh, now shout out to all of my tier three patrons. Uh, Jack, Glucose, Biscuit, Lysander. Pretty sure it's a Pokemon, right? Or am I, I hope that's not your name and I just called you a Pokemon. Okay, never mind. We're gonna keep it going. Edgar Rangel and Adeline Grubb. Thank you guys so much for becoming patrons. Really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Bye-bye.